online. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, welcome everyone to Ticulous Talks for uh, March 18th. A little bit delayed today, I understand, because uh, the uh, daylight savings time hasn't happened in, in England yet. So we're just going to deal with that, but next, next time we're going to be back to our normal schedule. Uh, I am, of course, going to... Ah yes, joined by. I already had to. I already had to leave and come back because Discord's annoying. All right, good. <laughs> I see. Yeah, we're trying out. Uh, <laughs> we're uh, we're trying out Discord for our voice chat, the stream. Uh, we'll we'll see how it goes. Anyway. Yes. Hello. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, I I am back. <laughs> um. So yeah, as as I said. Uh, in the announcement post this week, and such, uh, we're going to we're going to be talking about harmony this week. Uh, we haven't dealt much with harmony at all over the course of our past couple streams. I haven't really played it either. <laughs> yeah, um, but it is still a format that people play. I know. Um, either. Folks who didn't want to get into core, or else I, I, I've heard tell there are some who have had difficulty getting access to it, to product, and so stay with Harmony. Oh. Fair enough. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, and it's it bears mentioning. I, I know up until a couple of weeks ago, or at least a, a couple of months ago, before we knew core was going to be a thing, we were expecting to still be talking about Harmony, right? <laughs> Probably, yeah. Although we were obviously hoping for something like Core to appear, mm -hmm. uh, uh, if you've ever watched anything we do. Yeah, and, and see, that's the thing, actually, that we were on about Harmony because Harmony didn't change much. And now, well, that's, that's still true, I would expect. So, it might be treading old ground, really, when it comes to talking about Harmony, but we'll see what we can. I mean, obviously we can't complain about it anymore, because now we have Core. <clears throat> hey, if we don't like it, we've got something else to do now. Yeah! <laughs> Basically. Yeah. yeah. But, as per usual, we're just going to sort of talk about it as, we, as we'd like. Uh, and if there, if there are any questions... Any, uh, anyone in the chat, feel free to ask them and we'll deal with them as we can. But uh, since, of course, Harmony doesn't have any cards leaving it, uh, I think probably the, the best place to start would be to go through the decks that we knew were good back in Defenders and just kind of think about the new stuff in Sequester and Beyond that could have slotted into them. Honestly, my first thought was to quickly go over the mains and their viability in specifically Harmony. Oh. Because m most of our discussion was on core, but obviously for Harmony we can just quickly go through and be like, eh, no, yes, maybe, there's... Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, that's fair. Y y you mean the new mains, I expect, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. The new mains that we got in the new set, because as far as I remember when we were discussing them, like, as when we were discussing the set, it was mainly for core. Yes. But hey, we could quickly briefly just go over the mains now. Yep. So Captain Solano. Eh. I mean if it's not if, if it's not good in core, it's not gonna be good in harmony. That's pretty much yeah. fair to say, basically. Grubber feels like he could be slightly better in harmony, but still kinda bad. Just because there's probably more synergy for him when you just sort of delve into the old sets and grab some weird cards. That's possible, I guess, yeah. <laughs> but still not that great. Uh, Congratulations, Princess Skystar, you now have competition. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, Skystar uh, doesn't doesn't do control anymore when she's up against DJ, that's for sure. Uh, yeah. Still has a place as a, as an aggro main, probably. Yeah. And I feel like just pink aggro could still be good in harmony because, yeah. Yeah, the the, the, the ability to reliably clear off a trade conditions turn two is still really, really good, regardless of yeah. what else is going on. Uh, Tempest is a real Tempest. question, actually, yeah. Yes, that's the main reason why I suggested it, is because I'm like, Tempest, are you good, or... Uh... Hmm. Yeah. When, when she's up against a Twilight who does have access to Ancient Research, that is... A bigger question. Awkward. Yeah. I, I think the idea that Tempest still solves so many of your of your early game problems right away is is good. It, it's 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 still still valid. Um, yeah. It's never going to be not nice. Yeah. But the long, the lack of longevity is kind of the hmm. Yeah. Issue. That, that would pose to be the problem if you were playing against Twilight, if you were playing against DJ, um, if you were playing against any of the sort of... Because, like, if you're playing against DJ and stuff, you have to steal the game straight away, or you lose. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, and it seems like that'd be very difficult, but I'm not 100% sure. It is true uh, that we, we get in our chat that uh, Tempest can grab Double Diamond turn one against DJ, which is very... Ooh. That is good. That is beautifully techy. And uh, yeah, it, it is. That's a that's a good point as well. That like train traditions is just such a ridiculously good problem. If if you can run that instead of ancient research, then that's that's a good help for you as well. Yeah. So yeah, seems like. Uh, Tempest has herself a, a spot. A debatable spot. Yeah. But it's one to test. Certainly. Who knows? Yeah. Hopefully people will when they're making and say, hey, look, this is the correct answer, because... Mm. <laughs> uh, to round him out, Capper... I feel like someone could break him and build a weird combo deck, if I'm going to be honest. Probably. Like, it just feels like combo bait when you put it in harmony. <laughs> yeah, it's like... All right, what are you coming off with now? Well, when I do this, and then I flip and get five cards and do this, I can just win? And it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, with more cards to work with, he's definitely a more um, enticing prospect. Yeah, otherwise, he seems like he'd just be meh. Mm -hmm. White continues to not really have a main, unfortunately. Unfortunately. Outside of Octavia. Octavia's not bad. But yeah. Yeah. Uh, Novo is, well, I think there are better yellow mains now that you're in Harmony. <sighs> hmm. It's a weird one because, like, yellow sort of has all these mains where you're like, it's tough to say which is, like, literally better than the other. Because, mm -hmm. like, we have Fluttershy, we have, we have the sort of Fluttershy from Defenders, we have Thorax you could even put a debate for, you have, like, Cancelot Knight's Fluttershy still isn't awful, if we're going to be honest. Mm -hmm. It's got four power, it can move for one, you know, it's not terrible. And, like, it's got all these sort of mains where they sort of all lie at the same spot, but this spot's, like, lower than all the other good mains. Yeah, that's a good point. <laughs> and it's just kind of unfortunate, because if Yellow's mains were all at that line, it'd be like, whoa, Yellow just has so many really good mains, and they're all super good. It's just, they're all just good, not stupid or not great. They're all just good. And it's just kind of that awkward spot where, well, for tier one, you don't want just good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, Thorax has the potential probably to be to be above that line with the right support. <laughs> oh my gosh, yes. Um, I think the biggest issue with him is flipping him early. Mm -hmm. Yep. Uh, it's a bit awkward because you have to do the solve. But once you do the solve, it does, it can very easily get out of hand. <laughs> I, I know from experience. Um, I sort of, I solitaired it against pink-white when I was sort of trying to test and figure out how it works. And the thing is, 
the deck runs so many things that makes one power tokens that has three or less requirement that if Thorax is flipped, you can kind of just keep playing no matter what your opponent does. Hmm. Uh, in a lot of cases. And because some of the things that you use, like the Yellow Song and stuff, they're also useful in other ways. Yeah, yeah I guess that makes sense. And it's, it's, it's really surprising how much sort of in-deck in hate you can run in Yellow, because you've got Troublemaker hate, you've got Resource Dismissal, and like, oh my gosh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and now you've got enough enough tools against opposing friends and stuff too yeah you've got like yellow food fight it's it's kind of crazy really mm -hmm. i feel like we like they'll just be like a set will come out and then suddenly thorax is tier one and be like what happened oh I, it's just oh hey this 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 random enabler got printed it makes eight zero power tokens and you're like oh <laughs> <laughs> or something no it's just like oh yeah of course of course that makes him good. Yeah. But it's the sort of thing you won't you, we won't instantly notice. It'll just be like a month later, it's like, oh hey, they just won because that's really good. <laughs> Make like So it is the feel I always get from Thorax that he'll suddenly become good because some random thing got printed. Eight tokens and put a minus one power counter on all of them or something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um no, no I, I I wouldn't be surprised at all if, if that happened. He's like I think everyone understands that the main has a pile of potential in it. Uh, yeah. it. It's a sleeper hit that's just waiting to get woke up. Yeah. So, <laughs> when I uh, first made this post on Reddit, uh, we had uh, one, one comment which said that uh, Harmony was that format where F-Stop is still doing his thing. Um, <laughs> which is certainly still true. Uh, I can't really deny that. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's undeniable. I think the decks which use him would would, uh, would remain high up in uh, in styles. Whether that be uh, some of the some of the pink stuff that we saw at the at the end of Defenders, or focusing on purple, but uh, slow toolboxy control kind of things seem. Um, no, as was said often during Harmony, those decks just don't get worse generally. Yeah, unless obviously it gets banned. Yeah. <laughs> now we have a toolbox and no way of getting it or recurring it. Oh no! <laughs> Mass inconsistency. But yeah. Um, mm -hmm. So anyway, now that we've done the mains, yeah. what was it you initially wanted to do? I can't remember. Uh, I, I, well, like we have uh, the stuff that was big at, at, at the end of Defenders. We had um, um, Hot Wings, of course. We all love to talk about that. Uh, you had the sort of pinkish uh, toolbox control. Um, there was a little bit of orange-pink that was just starting to flare up. And... Uh, of course, there was there was orange. Orange has always been orange, yeah. and so like you know, we we, we, we if we if if if, if anything is going to change, then we we can talk about how those decks fared uh, with the new the new cards that came into them. Just as a was it orange pink or was it pink orange? What, what sorry? What uh, wasn't Gen Con last year? We had. This orange pink aggro thing happening, or what? I, I don't know. Mm. Oh, it was blue. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> okay, so yeah, we can talk about that. Apparently, I I am not going to be well informed on that. Apparently, I I uh, I don't remember the deck. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so that's good. <laughs> but anyway, uh, we, we can start with Hot Wings, as, as we all know. Um, mm -hmm. That deck, not losing its... Yeah, yeah, that was... A, yeah, M Makukum, that was the name of, of the deck. I remember that. I could have sworn that was... I could have sworn that was pink. But anyway. Um, yeah. Um, 
when Hoppings hasn't lost its uh, problem deck, it's still just as good, uh, generally. I just wonder, my, 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 my personal thoughts on it are if, if Bluna is still the right choice, because pink is so good now. Pink is so good now. If maybe the DJ version has just become generally better. Yeah. You've got how? Sorry. How fast does the how fast does the DJ version get started? Um. It was. I mean, obviously, you flip you flip your main over, and it it's. You, you don't have the like guaranteed easy turn two play of um, that uh, that Luna can pull off, um, but uh, it can. It's it's more consistent generally through the mid game. Was uh, was the 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 uh, the DJ version's main strength? No. Because I was thinking, like, does the explosive beginning that Bluna lets it have mean it'll always still be a contender? I don't know, like, the... Because starting problems are getting more and more relevant as time goes on, and decks get greedier. Yeah, see, that's the thing. With, uh, with, with, uh, with, with, with sorry, with Tempest in the game, Bluna loses a lot. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. One thing that actually came to me uh, a little while ago was actually the uh, the inspiration for us to have this topic uh, was bodyguard. Good card. Who'd have thought? Um, I've realized that 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 the old Camelot Knight's Lily is like disgusting with that card uh, because, especially with Octavia. Where you play Lily, and then that uh, is a plus two, and then that retires a friend, which creates a unicorn token, which is a plus two, and then yeah, it's 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 actually kind of nutty. Um, I didn't think of anything else that goes with that, but I know that Octavia in pink white in harmony gets to keep its resource from book because still has Sea Breeze's flower. Uh, could maybe be doing better now? I'm not sure. Hmm. Ooh, that is interesting, actually. Yeah. Because, yeah, Lily has always been just oh, just awesome. <laughs> yeah, and then... Like, oh my gosh. Like, playing pure aggro with, uh, with, with bodyguards is a little strange, but essentially you're, you, you, you'd be using your home limit retirements to throw unicorns at problems instead of yeah. using re using removal to do it. Although, of course, you'd still be running belly flops and um, similar effects. Hmm. I'm and yeah, I'll, okay. I'll, 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 Here's the fun question. Okay. The staff, does it get used in farming? Like, does it actually? Oh, staff in farming? I don't... Do, do we know? Do they try it? <laughs> um, I mean, it's in, it's in the core farming decks, I think. I, 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 I can't really see a reason why, it's, why it wouldn't be in there. Still a 7 okay. flip. You always want more power on your main. Or control on on the other side of the board. It, yeah, seems like a natural. Fair enough. Which I mean, you know, give that to Sequestria for uh, for giving a a a card that can go in that gets put into orange farming. Call that a successful something, set then. Something new. <laughs> um, good Storm King. Ain't gonna have any impact, is he? I can't even remember what he does. Some king is you can't. Characters can't move to or from this card unless it, they pay to. So like, yeah. um, 
I guess he's bonus two and only six, which is like that's kind of neat. The, well, actually, the interesting part of that is like when he's up there, because you know, presuming Applejack's going to be sitting there already. Uh, it, yeah, that's, that's the whole point, right? Yeah, it means that your your opponent can't like play an Ursa and shove Applejack away because you just say no, I'm just not going to pay the two AT. So in that sense, it's actually a, it's actually a pretty good epic. Um, Provided that Applejack was there already when you started. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, you can't you can't win the game with just that, but it is no. nice. Yeah, it is a good interaction for the deck. But yeah, as, as we sort of uh, saw in, in the chat here, uh, the amount of value that that uh, the toolbox can control can generate these days is is kind of the biggest problem in in, in harmony. Um, are you familiar with the uh, with the uh, Xerox unique cards trick? No Xerox. Uh, Queen Chrysalis identity theft. Oh yeah, if you frighten it, you can copy it. Yeah, so it was just that's, that's still an interaction. I'm just like. Feels wrong. <laughs> I mean, it, it, it does, but that's the way the rules work. Anyway, it was discovered a little while ago. Uh, something that 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 that, that, that uh, the best new card for that in Sequest and Beyond is um, uh, Giant Luna. Uh, yes, because she. I was about to say, I'm guessing. I'm guessing you do that with Midnight. <laughs> yes. Yeah. You. Because uh, she... you exhaust her. I go frighten her. Play Chrissy, unfrighten her. <laughs> yeah, that was that was discovered just a little while ago, and it's 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 bad or good, depending on your perspective. It's strong. <laughs> yes, and uh, do, doing it to plant stripes is also very very good. It, you know, you have to use Luna to frighten Plat or you know uh, do it uh, some other way. But that is definitely a card that was unique for a reason, and. Uh, being able to break that is interesting. And it's true that, like, getting that out against any kind of aggro is just ridiculous, right? <laughs> Plus two AT to play any any card that's uh, what is it? Two AT or less generally? Like, that actually, that breaks aggro. That might even break farming, honestly, if they have to pay three AT for Troublemaker. I feel like they could survive it. As long as you you can't do enough yeah. in the meantime. But obviously, chances are you're doing enough in the meantime. <laughs> so yeah, that is it's that ability to generate that kind of value to to pull back a redeeming qualities whenever you want, uh, in case one of your cards got like yeah, in, in case Luna goes away, or in case um, or yeah, actually, or in case uh, Chrysalis goes away, it's. I mean, obviously, everyone runs Misfire, but it's still tricky that way. Yeah. So, any other decks in Harmony? Um, um Harmony, eh? I mean, I don't know. It's it's that's all that I remember really from Gen Con of Yore. This might end up being a short stream, honestly. <laughs> uh, but that's you know, as I said at at at, at the start, it's uh, harmony is. Reason we left it behind, right? So, how does the main six do in harmony? Oh well, I mean, it does just as well as it always did. I, I imagine <laughs> it, it still it still wins games, right? Surely, like five is big for harmony. There's not a lot of yeah. It's it's true. Like you know, the uh, the that's, I, I assume you're uh, you're uh, talking about the cost or the power cost. Yeah, yeah, the uh, the cost is still something, but 
there's still nothing that counters it, even if you include the harmony cards. Well, there is, and um, I mean, Desert Road, I think. Well, yeah, Desert Road does, yes. Uh, yeah, as an opponent friend enters play, it loses and can't have abilities. Yeah. So it goes, I have this, and it says, uh, no, no, you don't. You you don't have that. <laughs> yes. Yeah, yeah. Desert Road. Also, I have I have one now for my mono orange, so I have a small chance of not getting blown out by the main six. Okay, all right. Good, uh... <laughs> good for you on that. <laughs> so, Snips and Snails or Pinky and Twilight? Um... Both? Because it's staying there is neat, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, I would. That's fair. Yeah, if, if you got space for it, just run both. I would say. Um, it uh, more consistently being able to mess with problems is good. Yeah, I guess, isn't it? Yeah, it kind of depends a little bit. Like, uh, it's it's known that like, I think the snips and snails are are the better aggro card, probably. Or wait, are 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 Pinky and Twilight? They're three cost, three power, right? Three cost, three power, but they actually get to stick around. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like that's the thing where it's like with snips and snails, you're just paying one more to also keep three power. Mm -hmm. Is the sort of way to look at it, and I'm like, hmm. I guess uh, they're also one less requirement though, which which can be pretty important. Yes, yeah, snips and snails are one less. You have to actually like have played something pink to be able to. <laughs> Do that, not just have, um, have trading traditions out. Trading traditions and flip domain, yeah. Or have, you know, the opponent just main six you or uh, whatever, and all, all you've got flip yeah. is, is a flip main left. Not that replacing a problem is necessarily your biggest concern in that situation, but <laughs> I mean, it might be a blackmail or something. Who knows? Mm. But yeah, I'd say if 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 you have the space for it, it's, it's probably best to have both of them around for the flexibility. Yeah, fair enough. Um, hmm. Is there anything that we think could make it so decks appear in harmony? That, that's a good thing to try and find. New decks that uh, want to break into the stage? Yeah. Hmm. Well, the obvious place to look, I guess, would to be the things that are doing well in core. Because um, you know, as as much as the new Supercharger cards might enable something new in the old Harmony stuff, I, I don't think either of us is going to be able to crack that puzzle within 20 minutes and still have it be an entertaining stream, at least. Just 20 minutes of us thinking and then, oh wait, this is what happens! <laughs> Oh wait, it's bad. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's not the conclusion you want. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that yeah. As as we get down the chat there again, this this pink purple thing might might be it. It's it's pretty. Or is it, is it pink purple or purple pink? I actually can't remember. But um, that that deck has a lot of ability to do do what it wants, basically. Um, yeah, I uh, uh, takes the DJ right away because uh, all pink decks do basically, and uh, juggling routine helps a lot to get your problem, get sorry, get your discard pile back, and yeah, just portal forever, which would be if it made it. Into harmony, it 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 it, it certainly would be great because that would be that, that that would then be a purple deck that's not toolboxing, a, a purple control deck that's not toolboxing, which would be wow. <laughs> which certainly begs the question of whether it would then do that, but probably not. Yeah, see, that's the thing, right? Because why wouldn't you? Slash light for F stop. Hmm. 
Now, is there any broken combos on the grapevine with random cards? Uh, nothing broken, I don't think. Like, uh, combos have existed. There's, I mean, even, well, I, I remember just in January, uh, when, when, uh, when the Emperor Bugle was doing his deck a day thing, he had that, that chaos combo that he pulled out, uh, which was like Megaphone and Actor Jax, I think. What was how he was doing it? Or something like that? Sorry, did you not see that? No. It. Excuse me. Yeah, it 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 it, it was something of like you had a bunch of AT generating friends, and you frighten them, and then you have the old orange resources like when you flip a chaos card, I'm frightened all your stuff or something, and then that's how you, that's how you do it. I you can't remember if that necessarily needed anything in Sequestria. Okay. <laughs> I, I, it, it, it's worth pointing out, we're talking about combos, we have the combo guy in our chat right now, uh, who is much more knowledgeable on the subject than we are. Ah, oh, that's right. I remember, yes. Yeah, you know, uh, Pirate Twilight is actually a card that I really wish was more useful. Uh, it's so it's so much value when it's played properly, but well, it's was well, it's it's, it's uh, purple blue, right? Yes, purple blue. It's a two for four, and when you drop it, everything else here, yeah, each other friend here gets frightened. Yeah, yeah. So like, like there's 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 expensive combos you can do with like with like spoiled rich if you want to go tricolor. That will guarantee frighten their whole board. I mean, if you want to frighten the whole board, then you just play. Um, yeah, you play true evil. True evil. <laughs> that old bean. Yeah. And uh, but you know, it's it's unfortunate because like, Twilight is. She is when you play this card. And you know, for good reason, she is when you play this card. Uh, but I, I'm still confused about why Katajak allowed was allowed to be enters play. Honestly, I mean, it's it's symmetrical, but yeah, it's it's certainly possible to create. But, but your deck's built around it, and chances are there's aren't. <laughs> yeah. Unless he bats. Unless he bats. Very good point. Bats is hilarious. Bats, uh, Kajak, is certainly one of the favorites out there. The, the, the wording on bats is your friends can't leave play, right? Uh, let me let me get it up because I just have Pony Head open because we are talking about sporadic cards. So let's go. Oop. But that's or your friends can't leave play this turn. Probably one of the weirdest wordings they've done. Right. Uh, I I was thinking I was thinking of villain challenge actually and. Uh, if you haven't been paying any attention, there's going to be one of those around the corner. And so, in that kind of asymmetric three against one, that's a fine. That 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 I. That's a fine card. Uh, fine thing for the villain to use, actually. That's into Kajak. But anyway, um, yeah. Uh, I see. We had a little talk about fighting contest. Bod Max still works. Uh, Mudmack needed to be cheaper though to work, and that no, 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 nothing's changed about that. Shining Moon, she shine do yellow dilemma. What does she shine do again? She's like retire a thing to move her or something. Uh, I can't remember.
Sequestria, multicolor, blue, yellow. Oh, I was just typing it in. Okay, oh. <laughs> I'll just go straight there. Right, sure. uh, blue, yellow. Flip all the multicolor cards. Shoeshine, traveler, immediate. Retire another one of your friends to move this card. One for one with three in each. Blue, yellow. When you win a face-off involving this card, make a critter. Okay, yeah. As well. Yeah, oh, I see. Holy cow, that's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, so the, the if you have that with Setting Moon, the yellow dilemma would be... You move... Hold on a second. Setting Moon is when you withdraw, you gain AT, right? I, I, I believe that's what she does. So you have essentially three moves with the yellow dilemma. That's fine. And then, where are you generating your draw from? The Celestia that when friends would enter, you would draw? Uh, no, 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 you're, like, you're, you're, you're exhausting the tokens and then retiring them to get your free move again. Oh, okay. Yeah. And then you're making AT, and it's like, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I guess that makes sense. Girl, I haven't thought about some of those cards in ages. <laughs> well, to, 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 uh, to, to, to some extent, uh, combo is kind of like... It's kind of like going to the well again every so often. Every new set, you just kind of look at, okay, here's Setting Moon, here's... Especially when you're in harmony. Here's setting moon. Here are the breezes. Here, are, here's your AT generator cards, and just like always. What can we do? Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Does anything break these cards again? Um, which is another another long on on the laundry list for why I am pleased to see them all go for core. But yeah, uh, it's, 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 it's worth pointing out that Harmony is uh, going to be on the schedule uh, two weeks from now at BabsCon. Hey. Yeah, so we'll, we'll get a look at what people want to do. Uh, having seen... I've seen a couple lists so far from, uh, that, that have been bandied around and, well, uh, looks like games will go on for a while. At least based on those. <laughs> Woo. But yeah, I, I think in summary, it, it kind of just comes back to where we were before. Is that harmony is well okay? So it, it, it's it's a little different now because obviously you can play core if you want. So one would expect harmony to instead be this sort of niche. Uh, thing that you play because you want to play it, right? So yeah, because they're focusing on core now, right? I'm not, I'm not remembering things wrong. Yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, technically, I'm not entirely certain if Enterplay's done anything official one way or the other, but it's at least the uh, the organizers at BevsCon have decided to focus on core. Yeah. So, so obviously, Harmony's going to do what all the other sort of secondary formats do in card games, where it's sort of like, it'll always have a following, uh, because there's, there'll be those people who haven't changed their deck in 20 years, and won't change their deck unless it gets banned, or whatever. Looking or at new, you, Orange or random. A random new rare is just like, oh, hey, that's better than a card I was already running. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll always have their followings because with, obviously, more eternal formats, it's like, well, I've invested into it. And, and that's it. <laughs> there you go. You invested into it. Congratulations. You win. Yeah, basically. <laughs> uh, you can play it now. And like that's sort of the importance of a format like, Har like Harmony to exist. It's sort of having that solid... Uh, board game feel to it where when you buy Monopoly you, you don't have to buy uh, the 
the Pokemon edition or the the I don't know Game of Thrones version or whatever else there is of Monopoly now. You can still just play Monopoly with Monopoly, and that's kind of the feel that a format like Harmony has. It's like, well, I bought this, you know, villain farming. I invested in it, got the deck ready, and now I can just play that mm-hmm. whenever. <laughs> like, whatever. Yeah. I might need to update it with some more up-to-date tech, and that's kind of it. Yeah, and that's and that certainly does appeal to to, to some people for sure. Uh, like I know, well. Not myself personally. I like having problems to solve and, and uh, puzzles to work out. I like I like evolving meta games. I like change. It's all cool. Yeah, it's kind of expensive sometimes, but eh, oh well. Yeah. <laughs> but other other people say, and as as Grandpa's has given us in chat, the uh, apparently Everfree is actually going to be a limited con, or at least it's, it's going to have some limited to it, which is great. I like that. Sounds like my kind of place. Limited is cool. <laughs> Uh, but yeah, Harmony is going to stay, well, it's going to be around to stay, and it's still going to be a thing. You know, maybe a year from now, it'll be like that sort of, well, a year from now, our stream about it is probably not going to be very different, <laughs> provided we do it. I don't, I don't know. Hmm. I feel like... If I had to play print a set that could shake up harmony, no one would be too mad about it. Yeah. Oh, I... Well, the question is, like, can they do that without the set being, like, ridiculously overpowered? No. Yeah, that's the question. But they could, they could really shake up harmony with some good old ban list fun. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's possible. Because, honestly, the thing is, when it comes to more eternal formats, the thing I think that companies don't do that I think they should do more often is go all right just to see what you all do we're banning this 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 and this good card have fun yeah don't worry it will only last six months so the cards don't plummet in value over goes oh, 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 oh. you go all right guys do something else for six months and see how it goes we'll bring them back don't worry about it mm-hmm. yeah and like so be really sort of blanket honest about it it's like okay for now, it's going to be banned like this, and we just want to see how you do. Yeah, yeah, that's good. That's a good point. Uh, and since, uh, since you know, if if core is is the new sort of super competitive format, then that means you are a little bit freer, perhaps, to monkey yes. with the old sets in harmony, and uh, you know, perhaps not. You might. Not want to ban the ultra rares because those are the ones that people, as you said, invested in and care about. But uh, yeah, t- yeah, kind of tinkering with cards and saying, "Oh no, your playset of F stop that cost you like a quid each when you first got it years ago is now fifty cents each for six months." Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> and I, I expect that would. Help. Getting rid of that guy. Like, let's see, let's come up with a silly list of how to try and change up the meta. You ban F stop gyro. Applejack Maud. DJ. DJ Um Bluna, because that was part of Hot Wings for a while, although I think it's as has been said, it's probably not good anymore. Yeah, yeah, I, I, um, I think you can get away with keeping Bluna in the matter. Yeah, and it's just like you know, just sort of get get an axe, kill them off for like five weeks, and bring them back later, <laughs> like sort of thing. Just just to see the deck creativity, because that's always a thing I've liked about the idea of having a format where it's just like you can run everything. Oh, hey, look, you found out the best decks. All right, scrap those. Find out the next best decks. Yeah, like I, I... because deck building and creating. Things is fun. <laughs> yeah, to some extent. It's part of the experience of the game. Well, see, I don't know, because, like, if you want that kind of experience, then you just play core, right? Well, mm, rotating format often gets sold faster. Like, the most competitive format gets sold faster. Right, yeah, I guess. And that's, like, why you let core do it, because it's obviously the most. It's the one you can experiment with the most in the first place. But then when you make your secondary formats 
less sort of focused on specifically being competitive. Like, if you're sort of really transparent with what you're trying to do, like I've suggested, like you're just like, okay, well, don't worry, we'll just bring them back in six months. Right. Or something like that. Like, even just specifically say something like that. Being able to just be like, okay, we're going to scrap all the b- good decks by smacking them with a mallet until they are just a mush on the floor. What are you going to build now? Yeah. <laughs> I- I'm not sure if, if, like, being that indiscriminate about it. Like, axing the top deck, perhaps, but, like, axing in the, like, the entirety of Tier 1 seems like... That's a little bit uh, of a broad brush, perhaps. But but if you ask the best deck, the second best deck that everyone already knows just takes its place. Well, not necessarily. It's 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 possible that there may have been a counter to that deck that wasn't getting run because the top deck was just killing it, right? I don't know. As someone who's always been casual with Yu-Gi-Oh, observing from the edge. They always just go, okay, the top deck's banned, and then the second best deck goes, hey, look, I need to be banned. And they go, okay, that deck's banned. And it just sort of goes down the step ladder, and then obviously new things get stuck on the step ladder as they release new things. Hmm. And it's just kind of like, um... <laughs> but yeah, I guess that could happen. But from my history of seeing things like that happen, it's not the highest chance. But I don't know. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, good point there, in the chat. Like I, I, I expect that control and harmony. Like yeah, I, I imagine it looks a lot like control and core looks now, probably. Uh, although of course, control and core is too. It it it's actually been bifurcated pretty neatly, actually. Uh, into purple, white, and purple, pink. But I, I, I feel like since all the, or at least most of the good core, uh, sorry, most of the good control events are, are core legal anyway, uh, if, you, if you just get rid of f-stop, then you probably fall back to core control regardless. And they still have gyro to search. Yes. So they, they can still toolbox in a way, you just have to be smart about when you use it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it, it would admittedly be a somewhat interesting problem to have Dyro and not f stop because then you have to really care about the ratios of events that you have in there. But, eh. I mean, yeah, sir, I'll, I'll admit that it, it, it's, it's certainly an interesting problem to solve. And that's, I suppose, the kind of thing that you would get given the the strategy that you're proposing solving. Yeah. I like. I think from a business standpoint, it's a stupid thing to do, but I still think it would be fun. (laughs) (laughs) Perhaps. I'll get my own card game and make stupid business decisions (laughs) for days. I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I think we've hit a stopping point. Yeah, I feel like we're kind of... You got anything else? We're kind of spreading the butter a little thin here already, uh, if you ask me. But anyway, um, uh, next stream will be in, in two weeks, of course. Uh, April 1st. Uh, by that time... Uh... <laughs> Yeah. Seriously, it will be April 1st. Uh, to the de- degree possible, I think we'll be able to go back to our normal time uh, because I think you guys get daylight savings next week. Something like that? I honestly need to look it up again, but I should I should be on normal time. <laughs> I will update you if I find out I am wrong. Uh, yeah, I, I'm... Oh, is that? Oh, shoot. Do I have a problem with that? Oh, I might. You're right. That's right. Okay, uh, so my employers at BabsCon have just given me an uh, important notice. Um, 
which is that yeah, I'm I'm actually going to be commentating the tournament there. Uh, oh, okay. Which Fair enough. which which is that morning. Uh, so in that case, we'll probably have to, I suppose, shuttle back for a week. Would be the best way to do it. Um, or not. Um. I mean, hmm. well, you, you could, it, the simplest thing to do is just say that we're, quote unquote, we're at BabsCon, or you could just say that Meticulous Talks is at BabsCon that weekend. Well. So pay attention to BabsCon coverage. Yeah, yeah, kind of. I'm, I'm not there, technically. I'm, I'm, I'm still here. I'm just on the airwaves. Uh, yeah, but on, on, on the land of the internet, you're at BabsCon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's... I can't see the air quotation marks I'm doing. <laughs> that's probably a good way of saying it. So yeah, I, I suppose we'll pick back up again uh, on, on the regular because schedule. I guess the best way to put it is Meticulous Talks itself is an entity of the internet, and to say that Meticulous Talks is at BabsCon means that the people who are doing things for... Uh, you know, the people who do Meticulous Talks are doing things for BabsCon. The end. Yeah. Yeah, that's probably the best way to say it. The summary to give. Yeah. Which would mean that we'd be back on then on the 15th of April if we just yes. skip that. And as, 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 as much as we appreciate the suggestion for Sunday afternoon, I believe that is uh, probably late at night for you. I mean, if you just want to hear me snore, go for it. And I don't even know if I'd be snoring. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, April 15th then. Uh, which means that this slide is now wrong, but April 15th, regardless. Um, and by that point, we'll, we'll have actual convention results to talk about. Uh, yes, which we'll thorny stuff. Yes, Yay. we can actually... Take data to dissect, my favorite. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. So... And hopefully there won't be a deck that I look at and go, wait, what does this do? <laughs> we'll see. Uh, there's... That's always the worst feeling, where you sort of stare at it for a while and go, I don't know how this wins. <laughs> I, either that means it's an incredibly complicated combo deck, or else, uh, or else there was some kind of mistake. But the thing is, like, I'm... I... No, no, the tactic is to make your opponent tilt. Uh, ah, yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, all right. Point made. I can't win, but they will never win. Mm. But yeah, I certainly wouldn't be surprised if we had some surprises left in uh, in core. It seems like like since because nobody, you know, we all have ideas as, as, as to what we think is good, but everything is so new. I wouldn't be surprised to have a, a sleeper deck come out at at uh, at one of these big conventions this year and, and just suddenly be some guy who worked out. Aha! This is gonna work. If someone works out how to make Granny even better than I do, because they probably can, I will be the happiest little chappy in the world. It's a good card. <laughs> we'll see. I love it. And to be fair, like if if they can actually get hold of three of the super rare to prevent main six from KOing Granny, the struggle to get rid of it on what we've currently seen is is definitely there. Oh, for sure. Sure. Uh, right. Well, April 15th, usual time. Uh, watch for. I'm pretty sure in a month. I'm pretty sure in a month we'll be synced on time. Yeah. Oh, yeah. That'll be for sure. <laughs> watch for Meticulous Talks at BabsCon. That's what we said. Uh, but yeah. I think that about, about covers everything we need to say today. Heck, I might be there in text chat. Who knows? Oh, we I certainly appreciate seeing you there. Or seeing your name there, I guess. Seeing your words. <laughs> Any... Although I'll probably be under my usual account name of Hulkwort. Yes. Anyway, I believe this stream has gone on long enough at this point. Yes. So, until next time, I've been Chris of Quartz. I've been solving problems. And we'll see you soon. See ya.